Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to RNG manipulate static Pokemon in Emerald version. This is slightly different from how it's done in Ruby and Sapphire, and very different from how it's done in Fire Red and Leaf Green. If you want to RNG manipulate in those games instead, I've made videos on them, and you can check out the links to those in the description, or in the cards I'll have in this video. With that said, let's go over what is a static encounter. In Pokemon Emerald, a static encounter is any Pokemon that you can only interact with once in the overworld, or any gift Pokemon you receive from an NPC that is not a trade. For example, all of the legendaries, like Rayquaza, Kyogre, Groudon, all three Regis, Mew, Deoxys, ho Lugia, they're all static encounters. The TV Lottie, that's a static encounter, and so is the Southern Island Lottie. In addition to just the legendaries, the Kecleons that you can find in the overworld, those are also static encounters. As for gift Pokemon, this is stuff like the Starter. This is the Cast Form or the Fossils. So if you'd like to RNG those, they're all static Pokemon. They all use the exact same method. Now, if you want a shiny Pokemon like I'm going to be going for, you need to know your secret ID. And there's a few different ways you can go about getting this. If you want to know your secret ID at the start of the game, you can follow Pokemon Trainer Choppy's video on that. Uh, if you want to figure it out after you've already started a game, you can either uh, watch my video that I've got on how to figure out your secret ID using a shiny that you've already caught, or you can use arbitrary code execution in order to change your secret ID. I'll link a video on how to do Ace uh, from Sleipnir. With that said, let's go over the things you're going to need in-game. So, first things first, save in front of the Pokemon you're trying to RNG manipulate, and if you're fighting a wild Pokemon, make sure that you've got uh, a way to capture them. Emerald version, pretty buggy game, so you could just clone a bunch of uh, Master Balls. In addition to that, I suggest having a lot of rare candies. Uh, if you're aiming for a lower level Pokemon, like maybe the Kecleon, which isn't going to be at like level 70, uh, you're going to need some rare candies in order to figure out its IVs. Uh, this is so that we can help figure out what uh, frame that we've actually hit when we inevitably miss our target. This is also pretty easy to get because, you know, in Emerald version, uh, rare candies very easy to come by using the cloning glitch. Uh, if you're not going to use Master Balls, I suggest having a catcher, like a Smeargle or a Breloom or something that can spore it and get it to low HP. Uh, other than that, that's probably everything you're going to need in-game. So let's move to what we're going to need out of game. Uh, there's going to be two programs we're going to need. It's going to be PokeFinder by Admiral Fish and Eon Timer 3.0 by Dylan Meadows. Uh, so let's open up Eon Timer first. It's in the lower right-hand corner, or the lower left-hand corner of the screen here. Uh, make sure it's in the Gen 3 tab. Set Calibration and Target Frame to 0, and set the Pre-Timer to 5,000. Then click this little cog here, and click the Timer tab. We're going to want to make sure that the console here that we select is proper. If you're playing on a GBA, which is a Game Boy Advanced, a Game Boy Advanced SP, a Game Boy Player, or a Game Boy Micro, you select GBA. If you're playing on a DS, select NDS-GBA, not NDS. And then hit OK. Once that's all set up, we are done in Eon Timer for now. And let's move over to PokeFinder. So in PokeFinder, what we're going to want to make sure we have is the static option open here. And we're going to want to make sure that we have a profile selected for our game. So if you don't have a profile made, you can click Manager, and then you can click New. Uh, in addition, make sure that your Secret ID and your Trainer ID are entered here if you want a Shiny. You select the profile, and you enter them here. Now, there's two tabs here, Generator and Searcher. We're going to fully ignore Searcher. We're just going to use Generator. Uh, in Emerald version, it's always Method 1. Initial Advances set to 0, and Max Advances. This is basically how long you're willing to wait. Usually, you're going to have a lower target frame in, you know, a the low thousands. Uh, this is basically, you know, how long you're going to wait. The higher it is, the longer you're going to wait. 100,000 is like an unreasonable wait time for any human. So, uh, you know, you're not going to want to go that high. But you can leave it this high if you're, if you're interested in finding something specific. For seed, you're just going to leave that blank in Emerald version. So, for the filters here, this is the IVs. You could type whatever IVs you want and hopefully find a nice IV combination uh, for you. A fair warning, though, because there's only one seed in Emerald, and, you know, this is a fairly simple method we're doing here, there's not going to be too many high IV combinations you're going to be able to get without delving into some more complex topics I've covered in other videos. So, with that said, I would suggest just, you know, going for, like, 20 to 30, stuff like that for the IVs, and only, like, two or three IVs tops. Uh, ability, you could pick if you want a different one. I don't care about ability, gender, or gender ratio. Make sure to set gender ratio if you're the Pokemon you're going for, uh, does have one like I'm going for Rayquaza who, who is genderless so that, that doesn't matter but you know if you're going for the starter it's got 87% male stuff like that make sure you set that so that you can use it to determine whatever frames you're going for hidden power and nature I don't care about any of these I'm just going to go for a shiny now for the shinies there's uh, four options there's any 
which will display both shiny and non-shiny frames. There's star, which will display uh, star shiny frames in generation eight. So star and square, they basically just refer to what type of shiny the Pokemon will be once you send it up to Gen 8, uh, aka Sword and Shield. So star is a star shiny in that game, square is a square shiny in that game, and star slash square is either one, you don't care if you're getting a star or a square shiny. And this is most useful for, you know, if you either don't care or you're not going to trade it out of Gen 3. If you're not going to chain it out of Gen 3, then there's no way to know, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go for that, and I'll hit generate. You'll get all the possible shiny frames that you've got, and as you can see here, I have one at uh, 17,048 advances. So this is the one I'm going to be aiming for. So I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it into the target frame section of uh, Eon Timer. And once we've done that, we're all ready to go. I'm going to save in front of the Pokemon that I'm aiming for. Now, here's the thing about the first attempt you are probably not going to hit your target on the first attempt. And this is because the Pokemon, every single every single one has a slightly different like amount of time after hitting A that the game gives it to you or generates the encounter. And so because of that, you, you'll never know how long it is. And so what we do is do one attempt where we inevitably miss it, and then we do a second attempt where we actually are calibrated and ready to go. In addition, you also want to figure out what is the last uh, what is the last dialogue box before hitting A on the Pokemon. So let's talk to Rayquaza here. So as you can see, I talk to Rayquaza, it instantly starts the battle. But for something like the fossils, what you want to do is get to the exact final uh, text box that says, oh, I gave you the fossil, and then you want to hit A there, stuff like that. All right, with that said, what we're going to do is hit start on Eon Timer, and then this pre-timer here, that's going to count down. When that finishes counting down, you soft reset the game. Then the next target here, the target frame, that is going to continue to count down, and you're going to hit A to start the encounter or receive the Pokemon uh, when that one finishes. So let's do that now. All right, so after we soft reset, we're going to try and get into the game world as fast as possible. If you notice here, it says my uh, Emerald version has a dead internal battery. This is something that does not matter for Pokemon Emerald at all. It doesn't matter if it's live or dead, so don't even worry about that. In addition, once I get into the overworld, I bring up the start menu. This is to prevent random NPCs or anything from causing advances. Uh, when the second timer finishes counting down, I close the menu, usually at the third or fourth beep, and then I hit A when the timer finishes counting down to actually start the encounter. As you can see, I didn't get a shiny Rayquaza, but that's totally okay. What we're going to do is just catch it really quick. Alright, so now what we need to do is figure out which Rayquaza we hit. So you can see this one says Brave. Now, what we're going to do is go to the main window of Pokefinder, click the Tools section here, and then click IV Calculator. This will bring up an IV Calculator so we can figure out exactly which Rayquaza we landed on. So... Uh, make sure to select the game as Emerald, and then I'm going to select uh, Ray, 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 Ray We're going to put the nature in here as well. It's Brave, and then we're going to put the level in. And then let's input its stats. 234, 246, 134, 120, 134, and 126. Then you can click Find IVs, and it'll give you some IV ranges and some exact IVs if your Pokemon is a high enough level. Now, the good thing about Legendaries is typically they're extremely high levels, but if you're aiming for a Pokemon with a bit of a lower level, what you can do is give them some rare candies. So if I give Rayquaza a rare candy here, his stats will go up, and we can click Add Row in the IV calculator and input it, uh, the stats for level 71. 5 IVs again. It looks like I input the special attack wrong here. I would imagine that's supposed to be 220. 5 IVs again. So as you can see, it makes one more, uh, more valid. Try that again. Give it another piece of rare candy. 
Click add row. Make sure it's 72. You have to be careful of typos. <laughs> Find IVs again. As you can see, we now know Rayquaza's exact IVs. And I only use three rare candies. And I'm going to reset the game anyway. So it doesn't even matter if, you know, I'm not losing these rare candies permanently, right? Okay, so what we do now is for the shiny section, set that to any. And then for the IVs, what we're going to do is type all of the exact IVs that we got on the Rayquaza. Really bad stats it has, apparently. Okay, and then hit generate. So we can see that we hit 1833, and we were aiming for 1748. So what we're going to do is hit control C on that advances and paste that into the frame hit section of Eon Timer. Hit update. It'll change your calibration here. This number is going to be huge. And I know what you're thinking. 1833 is not 14, uh, 25 frames away from 1748. This calibration value is not in frames, it's in milliseconds, so don't worry about the number being so gigantic like that. After that, all we can do is just another attempt. So we're just going to soft reset again and load into the game as fast as possible. One thing about Emerald is I actually think it might be beneficial to have a live battery. Uh, it lets you aim for slightly lower amounts of advances because you are not being held up by the dead battery screen that consumes, you know, about 100 frames, and uh, it just prevents you from getting slightly earlier frames. It's not a huge deal, though. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we hit it. All right, we missed again. That's not a big deal. All right, let's take a look at our Rayquaza here. All right, it is brave again, but it is a different set of IVs. So let's remove these rows here. All right, brave again. 242, 243, 150, 230, 131, and 129. Find, oh. defense is 150. Wow, this one already, even just at one level, we know the exact IVs, basically. We'll type those in again and see what we got. Two. So we hit 750, and we were aiming for 748, so we were just about two advances late. So we can paste that into here and hit update again, and our calibration will change, and we'll just give it another go. If you'll notice that the game value right before I, I hit A on the Pokemon, I lower it all the way. That's because I use the audio to determine the, like, to time myself instead of visuals or anything like that. And so I like to turn the, the volume down for the game so I can only hear the beeps. There we go. A shiny Rayquaza. And only uh, three attempts, really. And only two real attempts. So we're going to catch this, and we're just going to determine that this is, in fact, the shiny that we were aiming for. So what we can do in Gen 3 Static while we're catching this is reset all of these to 0 to 31, set it to star and square, and see, this is what we're aiming for. So the Rayquaza that we get should be timid here. So it is timid. And let's type the stats into the IV calculator. Two forty-five. Oh, it's all seventy. Uh, Two hundred one. And hit find IVs. So it says twenty-six to twenty-seven, thirteen to fourteen, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, thirty-one. So as you can see, the IVs that we have on our target amount of advances and the results of the IV calculator are matching. And now we have a perfect, or not a perfect, we have a shiny Rayquaza. 
Uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the, in the comments below or join my Discord to get additional help there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Thank you to all of my channel members. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate your support on stream and for the videos. Uh, if you guys want to become a channel member, you can do it for as low as $2.99. You get access to my videos early and some cool emotes to use in my streams. In addition, if I hit 30 channel members, I'm going to be doing the Gen 4 Battle Frontier instead of just the Gen 3 Battle Frontier. So that will be fun. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.